Okay, welcome everybody. I'm Ida Simes and I live here in Helsinki. I work as a journalist and I have been a board member of the Finnish PEN. And the reason why I, I think I must be <laughs> chairing this panel right now is, is that uh, I have been very much involved in the safe haven discussions in Finland. And our situation is really, really shameful at the moment. We don't have a safe haven writer in Helsinki. There is a new um, artist in exile uh, safe haven, um, how would I say, scholarship work now established by, by the artists programs in, in Helsinki and that's very, very good work, but we definitely do need more. Um, the reasons why we don't have this at the moment, they are really complicated. We used to have it but the city of Helsinki, both the city of Helsinki and the Arts Council funded by the government have changed the uh, funding uh, and, uh, uh, well, all the monetary criteria and that's why this program dropped out two years ago. But we also have really good news. Helsinki is really interested in this and, and Thomas Wahlgren, who's the local politician in the panel, has been working on this uh, really, really hard. So that's why the membership of ICORN and this new safe haven for artists in exile has been possible here in Helsinki. Uh, and also we have good news. There are other cities in, Helsinki, uh, in Finland who are interested in this. So we are not only aiming at having one writer in exile and that being in Helsinki, but we are aiming at getting more of those in, in other little towns and, and cities as well. So let's hope for the best and let's work on that. Uh, but now, the panel, uh, I will ask you kindly if we start from Anisul here, uh, to introduce yourself and because this is now a safe haven panel, we are not talking about multilinguistics uh, in or, or as such, not only that, but please do explain briefly who you are and what you work with and also why you had to flee your country because you are icon writer. And at the end of this first round then Tumi can also represent himself. And then we will get into deep questions. Yeah. <coughs> I am a Bengali writer, I am from Bangladesh and living in Uppsala, Sweden. I came to Sweden 2008 on an invitation from the Swedish Writers Union on a scholarship. Then during this scholarship, uh, I got an offer from the Swedish pen if I can be a guest for the city of Uppsala or Stockholm. Then I chose Uppsala because I was already living in Stockholm and I wanted to choose a new city and I wanted to have a city where I can connect with the community directly. And Stockholm is a quite uh, cosmopolitan and it is a risk to be uh, anonymous for a long time. So I did not want to, to be, uh, I did not want to be anonymous for long. That was my consequences uh, to be in Uppsala. And then the second thing is why I came uh, on this program. When I went to Uppsala, Uppsala was not a part of ICORN, so I went there as a guest writer. Then during my guest writer scholarship, they joined in the ICON system. And my political consequence in Bangladesh was Bangladesh and France has a controversial corrupt deal with the French authority and the Bangladesh authority. And the French authority wanted to import some pieces from the museum, the ancient period museum pieces. That are, there is an international standard for the museum pieces. So if there is an only one piece or unique, then the, you cannot send the original to a second country. Then you can only send the duplicate. And then you need to have a proper documentation and insurance. They violated all the standards. Then I founded that document and I started to write an investigative reports along with a group of friends. And basically I was a poet and a translator and I used to work with theaters and I used to work for the editorial team, but that I found as an interesting for me to disclose that corrupt deal between Bangladesh and French authority, and that brought a uh, problem to me, and the French authority wrote to my editor and also the local uh, powerful people, they were also tr trying to influence the authority to, oh, 
to make trouble for me. Luckily, the editor was in favor of me, and he asked me the explanation. Then I explained the situation, but I was saved by my job. But then the time was very tough for me to be there. And I heard the friend, the Swedish Writers' Union and the Swedish Pen, and they suggested better to continue with the scholarship. That was the gr ground for me. And uh, like we know really well with the with the pen activists at the moment, the situation in, in Bangladesh is, is really dramatic. So Bangladesh is, um, we, we get a lot of um, requests for help from Bangladesh all the time. Have you been contacted also by your fellow countrymen while you have been in, in Scandinavia? Yeah, I have a contact with my colleagues in Bangladesh because I did not stop my producing of writings and translation. And I have um, uh, continuous contact with my colleagues and friends. Okay, but let's continue with the round. Uh, hello, my name is Mazen, <coughs> Mazen Maruf, and um, I'm Palestinian Icelandic writer and poet. In 2011, um, I had to leave Lebanon and go for a safe haven in Iceland, Reykjavik. And uh, as everybody knows, like the program, like is supposed to be for two years. You know, Reykjavik City is supposed to host a writer for two years, but after my residency was expired, like according to Icon program and the um, the city uh, program as well, uh, I had to find a solution. Fortunately, I applied for citizenship and due to this special or the very particular laws in uh, or the system in, in Iceland, I could get a passport, Icelandic passport. That changed my whole life in a way like. Uh, during, you know, I was born in Lebanon as Palestinian, like, so I was a Palestinian refugee all the time. And in Lebanon, when you are born as a refugee, no matter what your nationality is, you don't get any papers. You don't get any uh, kind of civil or social rights. So Palestinians in Lebanon uh, have a very, very tough situation. They cannot possess a place, like they cannot pur purchase a place to live in. Uh, they are not allowed to enter any official system. They don't have any kind of social welfare like or retirement money or whatsoever. And uh, I don't know if it was clever or unclever of me, but I was involved in some political writers, uh, writings, though I write, I'm really concerned in literature, but everybody in Lebanon speaks politics. You know, you go, as I was saying this earlier, you go in a taxi driver and in a taxi and the taxi driver speaks to you in politics. You go to buy some vegetables, and the seller also, like the vendor, speaks to you about politics. So everybody is engaged in politics here or there, and it becomes part of everyday life and your personage. And I was like, I thought that, okay, I can say whatever I want, I can criticize whatever I want, and I did through some articles, and I got uh, some threats there. And this has been going for like 10 years, but I was ignoring, and then in 2010, 2011, it was the optimum of these threats, and I thought that I will have to leave, and fortunately, ICORN just helped me uh, doing so. And uh, in Iceland, it was like a new beginning. Can, anyway. can you just briefly say anything about the current situation? What do you think? Is it because of the Syrian crisis even worse now the situation or, or has it been like well, that for a while? Well, you know, like uh, uh, I published like I published a book, uh, a collection of short stories that is titled Jokes for the Gunman. And, <coughs> and uh <-huh. laughs> I, I will have to say something <laughs> Was about it. Was it fiction? <laughs> yeah, it's fiction, but it's also based on, on, on my experience in Lebanon because before the Syrian crisis, Lebanon was under war for like almost uh, 15 years and I witnessed like when I was a kid, lots of battles and conflicts and, you know, like horrible things that were going on. And 
I think it was kind of like uh, making deal with your memory. Wh wh I went to Iceland and I was carrying my memory and my notebook. And I had to, to treat this in a way or another. So I published this book and I was like, I thought, okay, now I've been out of uh, Iceland for five years and I can go back to Lebanon j to sign the book. You know, like my publisher is there and everybody there asks like, okay, come over and sign it. And so I went there, I took this step. I went there and I can tell that the situation has drastically changed since 2011 to 2016, you know, like the crisis of Syrian refugees is by far more horrible than any crisis I've ever like read about, at least or knew, known as Palestinian. You know, uh, it's it's very open. All the consequences and all the scenarios like are just uh, possible there. You never know what how the situation will explode and you know, when you know and. But I don't want to go through it. It's very, really yeah. very, very complicated situation. And I don't think I'm an expert in like, you know, but I can see that, for example, uh, lots of Syrian refugees in the streets, you, <coughs> you see all these mothers, moms with their kids, with no father, with no man. And it makes you think of where is the male, where is the man, you know? And then the man is either arrested or killed or fighting or f uh, missed or maybe immigrated or like so and people just are left over so this situation is not at all um, good anyway thanks and then manal hi just try again it's working i think so Hi, I'm Manal al um Iraqi writer and poet uh, who lives in Norway uh, since uh, 2009. Uh, I came to Norway or uh, before our uprising and uh, uh, because of my situation and my job as a journalist in uh, Nineveh city, uh, which is Mosul. Um, I think Musa City uh, uh, became very famous uh, two years ago after uh, ISIS uh, 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 got control, took control uh, on it, and it's now uh, the city now. It's a capital of Islamic State. So you can imagine I lived in that city uh, with the um, um, same situation, but not a uh, very obvious situation because uh, the army, uh, Iraqi army was still there, and uh, but they could uh, do nothing about these uh, uh, militants uh, group or Islamic groups because they are very, very active since 2003 until now. It's not uh, just uh, suddenly happened, they control the city in one day. This, uh, this progress uh, came uh, uh, after uh, years of active uh, uh, active uh, uh, groups and uh, connection with other uh, um, uh, countries around us, so uh, when when the city of fall fall, uh, fall uh, I, I was not surprised because I know the roots of the problem there. As a journalist, of course, and um, as a worker woman in uh, such a city, it was so dangerous for us. And uh, after exactly after 2004, uh, they start attacking um, uh, journalists, press uh, men, uh, media men, and um, my personally, I lost m many many colleagues of mine. And until 2000, uh, um, the end of uh, 2004, they attacked my family. Uh, they attacked my family car, and I lost uh, one of of. Our, my member, my relatives in that uh, car, they thought I am in this car because daily I went to my job in this car. But after that, when they discover I'm not in and uh, my son was injured in it, and they start sending uh, personal uh, threats uh, into my house. So I have to leave that city, which I used to work in it, to another city 
in, in most in Nineveh um, uh, city itself. Because Nineveh is a very, very big city, it includes the center city, the origin city, and the small, small cities around it. And when I moved to Mosul city, uh, I, uh, um, I couldn't work for a while. And after the, after the accident, I have to work because uh, I don't have any resource to live, just my job. And uh, I start publishing some articles in surname. It's not in my name. But even that, they discovered that I am, I am the one who is writing these articles. After that, I, uh, I have to leave because uh, it was so dangerous for me and my two kids. I left to Kurdistan uh, of Iraq uh, in uh, Erbil city. Erbil, it's my original, my grandfather's, my grandparents' city. But until I am not a Kurdish, I cannot live a normal life there. I couldn't find uh, a permanent uh, job. I couldn't find uh, a good resource to live. And uh, I, when I start to work in media and the press again in, in that area, uh, most of the uh, newspapers and mo most of the um, um, news agencies are uh, controlled by uh, Kurdish parties. And you have to work in their, uh, under their uh, ideology. And this is not my goal because I, I want, I'm, I'm a free speech activist. I, can, I cannot work like that. After that, I get some, um, uh, they start bothering me as a foreigner. You are not allowed to, to stay for, a for, for long in Kurdistan. And I have, every month I have to go to the security uh, office and to stamp my uh, thumb that I am exist, that I am paying this and this and this. And, uh, and the other foreigners who came from Europe, they allowed to stay forever. They don't ask them. And this is was very, very awkward and very hard uh, situation for me as an Iraqi uh, citizen. I cannot live in my Iraqi uh, area. So well, uh, by, a cha by chance, by a friend, I heard about iCoron. And uh, I applied for ICORN, and they start. In that time, in 2009, it, the situation was less uh, for, there is no so much pressure on this organization. And this organization was not uh, familiar for, uh, for writers around the world. And I, I applied, they accept my case uh, directly because I, I sent all the documents which uh, proved that I am in this situation. And they start contact uh, with me, and uh, after that, uh, I just uh, fly from uh, Erbil to Norway directly, and I am here now. Thank you. Uh, later, let's get into also the journalism you might have or might not, but whatever have, have been able to practice when you have been in Scandinavia. But then, to me, please, and I hope you don't feel on a, uh, I'm being unfair when saying that the situation in Finland is, is or has been so bad because be thanks to you we luckily have now safe haven ship and uh, Helsinki can become part of ICORN. The thing is that I'm always comparing the current situation to the dream situation and I want to have all those 14 or 16 or how many of those ICORN ships you have in Norway. <laughs> so let's, let's have a, our goal there. But uh, to me, once you introduce yourself, I also want to ask you, uh, you have also said that it's not just that we should have safe havens in, in the Nordic countries and especially in Finland, as for our point of view, because, um, because it's a fair thing to do or something. But we also gain something, we get something for the artists who come here. So please tell what you mean by that. Thank you, thank you uh, for the invitation and I'm very proud to be here with my brothers and sisters who have found some refuge in the Nordic countries. Um, <coughs> Uh, let me just explain the situation in Helsinki, uh, or sorry, introduce myself. I'm a philosopher from here. Uh, I have earned my bread and butter in the philosophy department next door. Uh, but I'm also on the city council here, uh, and I've been engaged in, in, in global solidarity work since I was a kid. Uh, and uh, uh, just the facts about Helsinki, that after great work by, by friends from Penn and from other organizations. On 2nd December last year, uh, we achieved for the first time in Finland 
a decision by any city to join the safe haven program. Uh, so Helsinki City Council, which is the highest decision-making authority in Helsinki, decided on that day against lots of obstacles that we will use 130,000 euros this year for, safe, for starting up the first safe haven on the city level uh, in Finland. So that was a bit of a breakthrough and on 4th March this year uh, the first Helsinki safe haven artist came to uh, Helsinki, this is Jovan Safari, whom some of you may know. I actually haven't met him yet, but uh, an artist from Haifa who, who is the first to have a community sponsored or local authority sponsored safe haven uh, invitation to Finland. So, so there I that is a small achievement, a small step forward, but of course, like, uh <coughs> like the chair, I would like to see each uh, single local authority in Finland do this. It would have to expand. Uh, why I think it's important? Uh, I think it's nice to to think of 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 some aspects. One is that it is good uh, 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 humanitarian or human rights policy. Uh, that's the obvious point that it's uh, that if we can and we we should uh, help people who are in danger because of the uh, the uh, use they make of the freedom of expression. So thank you for the use you have made of your freedom of expression and, and uh, uh, congratulations for that work. We are grateful for your courage. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, but as uh, uh, mentioned, the other, the, there's two other uh, dimensions which are important. One is how we understand ourselves in Finland and in Helsinki. That in, in medieval Europe there was a tradition uh, in times of, of conflict and upheaval that cities could provide safe havens for those who were persecuted in other cities. Uh, so there's a tradition in the European history that, that local authorities, local people, can take care when states are falling apart or when states are not living up to their duty. So there is, uh, and one thing to do today, it has to do with the whole cycle of globalization, is to reconstruct uh, that notion that cities can be actors and need to be actors on the global scale, the global politics, the globalization of politics, that, that all glo global affairs enter and come into the private lives and, the and into the life at, uh, at the local level. So one expression of that is that we, not only as states, but as cities, provide refuge, uh, uh, shelter to people who are in danger because of the use of freedom of expression. So, so this is one thing. The global responsibility needs to be taken down and anchored in daily life. So, and the other thing is that migration, uh, asylum seekers, refugees, migration uh, is sort of upsetting, uh, uh, intervening, changing the way of life in our part of the world in a big way. And in Finland, we're not very used to it. And what we need, one thing that is a great need of, of today is to show the beauty and the great hope and possibilities that go into this uh, dialogue between civilizations that you are celebrating here today uh, with the main theme of today, how how literature of different languages can can enrich each and every site. So I think uh, what the Safe Haven program does, it's give a f it gives a face and expression to the enormous opportunities that are there when people with different capacities and capabilities come and meet and cross borders. Uh, so I think that is the that is the third aspect that has to be taken. That is sort of how it's enriching and how it's valuable for us. Uh, so, so these are some of the motivations, the humanitarian motivation, the, the uh, globalization motivation, and the migration motivation. They're all very uh, important, and I'm, I'm happy that we have in, in Helsinki now the first safe haven programs. But I also want to report, especially to those who are from here, that even though we have this decision in the city council, we had a huge majority for that, uh, we need to have public pressure, we need to have active help to keep, to maintain that majority. So I'm also here to make a political appeal that help people like me on the city council to achieve again and again and again in Helsinki this majority for, for having this program. So thank you for, uh, f for, for the invitation and I'm so happy that uh, you are here and this thing is happening. What I have noticed under the years when, when working as an activist with uh, Finnish PEN and, and also participating in congresses of, of uh, the whole PEN family, international PEN and all, um, 
it has always made me a huge impression to see so many also safe haven artists, but also people who work with them. Either they are uh, people who work in the countries, in the cities as ICON uh, officials or, or officers, or then they could be um, other writers in exile who already have terminated the exile ship, but they are still hanging on with us and, and uh, being board members and so. So what I would like to ask you briefly now, maybe Manal would start, but anyway, um, if you go from here <laughs> to this way, um, just that uh, all of you have also worked as journalists, and, and before I gather in these panels, we have been talking about poetry and, and fiction literature, but, but as you have worked as a journal journalist, have you been able to practice journalism while in Scandinavia? And do you have the feeling that what you are saying, what you are writing has been listened to? Uh, meaning that now there is war in, in Syria, there is ongoing crisis in Bangladesh. Ha have you been able to get your voice out to be heard? Manal, please. Uh, of course, uh, I, I work as a freelancer for Arabic press. But uh, uh, mostly uh, sorry, Arabic press in Norway? Uh, or no, no, yeah. it's not, no, not in yeah. Norway. Uh, I live from here, uh, I work from here and send it to Arabic press in Middle East. But it's mostly in uh, literature and culture field because I stopped working in, in uh, politician field. I was uh, a reporter and uh, I was a journalist who covered most of the conferences in, in, uh, in uh, north of Iraq uh, for uh, some newspapers. But after that, when um, uh, I faced this uh, situation that I am not a Kurdish and I cannot write what, uh, what, what I saw and what I uh, get uh, some statement from the uh, uh, participants, uh, they uh, actually one, once I, uh, I left the job and the other, uh, the other job I was kicked out because I didn't obey the, the rules, of course. So I stopped working in politicians because uh, actually, my mother <laughs> asked me to stop talking about it because they still, uh, some of my uh, families in uh, Musa city and uh, the uh, others in Kurdistan, and I'm still aware uh, maybe uh, they will discover that I am uh, related to them. And uh, oh actually, they know that they can they can find out very easily because the gossip in this area is very easily. You can find the information from anybody, even from neighbors. You cannot trust anyone. This is the problem in Middle East. Even when you are talking about Penn International, we had, uh, as I know, uh, we had a problem uh, with the Pen and Pen International in Kurdistan. They didn't keep the privacy for the writers who who wants to apply for ICORN. And uh, I know about this uh, uh, this uh, crisis in, in that time. And they they uh, they closed the office. And I think it was in uh, 2008 uh, until 2009. Uh, sorry. I, uh, can can you define that? Uh, do you mean that people who are applying for getting an ICORN exile ship Actually, can be in yeah, danger? Yeah, yeah because this, uh -huh. this was very that's, very critical. That's very bad. Yeah, thing. very bad uh, thing. When uh, I start contacting uh, 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 administration, ICORN administration in Istanbul, uh, they uh, they told me to be aware not to tell anybody about my application because. It, it seems they had a bad experience with this region before because they couldn't uh, save uh, some writers or some artists and they 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 disappeared or or uh, they they um, I don't know there are some cases in this I I don't have so much details but as I know there were an office in Kurdistan pen office and they closed it because of this yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know. Uh, quite recently, the Penn Kurdistan office was raided. There is also, uh, I mean, it was uh, burglared, and, and uh, some say it might be officials, but there are investigations going on. I really don't know who did it, yeah. but that's a b very bad thing. Yeah. But as for, uh, I used to be the chair of the Writers in Prison Committee in Helsinki, and I know there have been cases that there have been writers who and journalists who have uh, applied for a safe haven to be a writer in exile, but they have disappeared before nobody could get yeah, to help yeah. them. So that's that's a very yeah, big for that. Yeah. We 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 warn the writers who and uh, they apply to ICON and please mm. don't tell even your 
family mm. until we guarantee you will uh, go out uh, from the country because it, this is it is very dangerous to deal with this uh, uh, issue you yeah, because you are saving someone he is totally in in a problem he he lives under attack he lives in in very critic uh, situation we have to get him safe uh, as a icon uh, writer we if uh, if we if we start uh, spreading his news before getting him it it will be so wrong mm -hmm. this is very important uh, uh, information i think it it has to be mentioned also uh, uh, in ICORN uh, statement. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm. I, I know, but sometimes it's it's difficult also for the ICORN to get the message tr through to to the areas where, where people are coming. But uh, Masol, yeah, um, um, sorry, Maze, <laughs> uh, please, um, you you mentioned the situation of refugees earlier, and uh, I think in other Scandinavian countries it's the same, but in Finland we have a terrible wave of right-wing uh, politics and, and racism going through Finland, and I really appreciate it in every time we see journalists from uh, MENA region to write about the real situation, because sometimes, uh, b well, we see refugees here in Finland, but we we are not able to see where they are coming from or what the situation is, but uh, on the TV news we see uh, all the sunken ships in Mediterranean and, and all sorts of things. But have you been able to get your message through as a, as a journalist when, when you have been in Iceland? Or, well, actually, how is it in, in Iceland, the situation? Um, you know, Iceland is, is an island, yeah. so people cannot get through <laughs> they through, can't the, they won't through be the ocean. Yeah, uh, it's very it's No, but it's the impossible. political discussion is there. Yeah, uh, well, you know, like, also Iceland is, is at the very, um, uh, like, upper part of the upper hemisphere, and, um, and people there, like, when I was there, it was like this uh, socialist, uh, government and then it changed into right wing government and the right wing government like was doing some uh, statements that sounded a little bit funny for example there is someone who said okay uh, we have to put quota for tourists in this country because I go to a coffee house and I cannot find a place to sit <laughs> so we have to kick out some tourists you know like it was not against refugees, but even tourists and but building Iceland more coffee houses yeah, is not a solution. And Iceland, you know, Iceland is like a very touristic place, so people like to love to go there. And and then you have this parliament member who's saying we have to limit, you know, like uh, these <laughs> tourists. So when it comes to refugees, it's really, really a, 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 a more critical situation. And just to stay on this uh, point. A friend of mine, their writer, proposed, like she's Icelander, and she proposed that uh, she raised the voice recently, very recently, to host uh, uh, refugees from Syria in Iceland, because Iceland is really big and there is plenty of space, and I think they have also, they can afford uh, hosting some hundreds of refugees, you know, like, and I still find it really uh, kind of uh, unfair that uh, Iceland is hosting only very, very few families. Third aspect that has to be taken, that is sort of how it's enriching and how it's valuable for us. Uh, so, so these are some of the motivations, the humanitarian motivation, the, the uh, globalization motivation, and the migration motivation. They're all very uh, important, and I'm, I'm happy that we have in, in Helsinki now the first safe haven programs, but also want to report, especially to those who are from here, that even though we have this decision in the city council, we had a huge majority for that. Uh, we need to have public pressure, we need to have active help to keep, to maintain that majority. So I'm also here to make a political appeal that help people like me on the city council to achieve again and again and again in Helsinki this majority for, for having this program. So thank you for, uh, f for, for the invitation and I'm so happy that uh, you are here and this thing is happening. 
what I have noticed under the years when, when working as an activist with uh, Finnish PEN and, and also participating congresses of, of uh, the whole PEN family, international PEN and all, um, it has always made me a huge impression to see so many also safe haven artists, but also people who work with them. Either they are uh, people who work in the countries, in the cities as ICON uh, officials or, or officers, or then they could be um, other writers in exile who already have terminated the exile ship, but they are still hanging on with us and, and uh, being board members and so. So what I would like to ask you briefly now, maybe Manal would start, but anyway, um, if you go from here <laughs> to this way, um, just that uh, all of you have also worked as journalists and, and before I gather in these panels we have been talking about poetry and, and fiction literature but, but as you have worked as a journal journalist, have you been able to practice journalism while in Scandinavia and do you have the feeling that what you are saying, what you are writing has been listened to? Uh, meaning that now there is war in, in Syria, there is ongoing crisis in Bangladesh. Ha have you been able to get your voice out to be heard? Manal, please. Uh, of course, uh, I, I work as a freelancer for Arabic press. But uh, uh, mostly uh, sorry, Arabic press in Norway? Or uh, no, no, yeah. it's not, no, not in yeah. Norway. Uh, I live from here, uh, I work from here and send it to Arabic press in Middle East. But it's mostly in uh, literature and culture field because I stopped working in, in uh, politician field. I was uh, a reporter and uh, I was a journalist who covered most of the conferences in, in, uh, in uh, north of Iraq uh, for uh, some uh, newspapers. But after that, when um, uh, I faced this uh, situation that I am not a Kurdish and I cannot write what, uh, what, what I saw and what I uh, get uh, some statement from the uh, uh, participants, uh, they uh, actually one, once I, uh, I left the job and the other, uh, the other job I was kicked out because I didn't obey the, the rules, of course. So I stopped working in politicians because uh, actually, my mother <laughs> asked me to stop talking about it because they still, uh, some of my uh, families in uh, Musa city and uh, the uh, others in Kurdistan, and I'm still aware uh, maybe uh, they will discover that I am uh, related to them. And uh, oh actually, they know that they can they can find out very easily because the gossip in this area is very easily. You can find the information from anybody, even from neighbors. You cannot trust anyone. This is the problem in Middle East. Even when you are talking about Pen International, we had, uh, as I know, uh, we had a problem uh, with the Pen and Pen International in Kurdistan. They didn't keep the privacy for the writers who who wants to apply for ICORN. And uh, I know about this uh, uh, this uh, crisis in, in that time. And they they uh, they closed the office. And I think it was in uh, 2008 uh, until 2009. Uh, sorry. I, uh, can can you define that? Uh, do you mean that people who are applying for getting an ICORN exile ship Actually, can be in yeah, danger? Yeah, because this, uh -huh. this was very that's, very critical. That's very bad. Yeah, thing. very bad uh, thing. When uh, I start contacting uh, 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 administration, ICORN administration in Istanbul, uh, they uh, they told me to be aware not to tell anybody about my application because. It, it seems they had a bad experience with this region before because they couldn't uh, save uh, some writers or some artists and they 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 disappeared or or uh, they they um, I don't know there is some cases in this I I don't have so much details but as I know there were an office in Kurdistan pen office and they closed it because of this yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, quite recently, the Pen Kurdistan office was raided. There is also, uh, I mean, it was uh, burglared, and, and uh, some say it might be officials, but there are investigations going on. I really don't know who did it, yeah. but that's a b very bad thing. Yeah. But as for, uh, I used to be the chair of the Writers in Prison Committee in Helsinki, and I know there have been cases that there have been writers who and journalists who have uh, applied for 
a safe haven to be a writer in exile, but they have disappeared before nobody could get yeah, to help yeah. them. So that's that's a very yeah, big. For that, yeah. we 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 warn the writers who when uh, they apply to Icon, and please mm. don't tell even your family mm. until we guarantee you will uh, go out uh, from the country, because it, this is it is very dangerous to deal with this. Uh, uh, issue you because you are saving someone he is totally in in a problem he he lives under attack he lives in in very critic uh, situation we have to get him safe uh, as a icon uh, writer we if uh, if we if we start uh, spreading his news before getting him it it will be so wrong mm -hmm. this is very important uh, uh, information i think it it has to be mentioned also uh, in ICOR and uh, statement. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm. I, I know, but sometimes it's it's difficult also for the ICON to get the message tr through to to the areas where, where people are coming. But uh, Masol, yeah, um, um, sorry, Maze, <laughs> uh, please, um, you you mentioned the situation of refugees earlier, and uh, I, I think in other Scandinavian countries it's the same, but in Finland we have a terrible wave of right-wing uh, politics and, and racism going through Finland, and I really appreciate it in every time we see journalists from uh, MENA region to write about the real situation, because sometimes, uh, b well, we see refugees here in Finland, but we we are not able to see where they are coming from or what the situation is, but w uh, on the TV news we see uh, all the um, sunken ships in Mediterranean and, and all sorts of things. But have you been able to get your message through as a, as a journalist when, when you have been in uh, Iceland? Or, uh, well, actually, how is it in, in Iceland, the situation? Um, you know, Iceland is, is an island, yeah. so people cannot get through, <laughs> they through, can't the, they won't through be the ocean. Yeah, uh, it's very, it's no, but it's the impossible. political discussion is there. Yeah, uh, well, you know, like also Iceland is, is at the very um, uh, like upper part of the upper hemisphere and, um, and people there, like when I was there, it was like this uh, socialist. Uh, uh, government and then it changed into right wing government and the right wing government like was doing some uh, statements that sounded a little bit funny for example there is someone who said okay uh, we have to put quota for tourists in this country because I go to a coffee house and I cannot find a place to sit <laughs> so we have to kick out some tourists you know like it was not against refugees, but even tourists and but building Iceland more coffee houses yeah, is not a solution. And Iceland, you know, Iceland is like a very touristic place, so people like to love to go there. And and then you have this parliament member who's saying we have to limit, you know, like uh, these tourists. So when it comes to refugees, it's really, really a, a, a more critical situation. And just to stay on this uh, point. A friend of mine, their writer, proposed, like she's Icelander, and she proposed that uh, she raised the voice recently, very recently, to host uh, uh, refugees from Syria in Iceland, because Iceland is really big and there is plenty of space, and I think they have also, they can afford uh, hosting some hundreds of refugees, you know, like, and I still find it really uh, kind of uh, unfair that uh, Iceland is hosting only very, very few families. Name three little things. It can be like three words, but let's say if uh, three little things what you think that, are mo that have been most helpful and important for you when you have become uh, Scandinavian icon writers. And, and this is the reason why I'm asking this is that uh, we want to establish more of these positions here in Finland, but I think also in Denmark and, and other Nordic countries we want to have more. So, so uh, all the time, it's, it's not just that we have to be happy that now you are here where you are, but we also have to be practicing how, how we do this better and better all the time. So if you want to say 
fish liver oil, that can be like one thing, but it can be also something more deep. But let's say that you are safe, so safety is, is something that we take for granted, and then you might get some money to provide your living cost, so that's for granted. But, but what else do you need? Do you need colleagues, friends, whatever? So if Anisu starts, and, and then we go further, and then to me briefly, you comment on this round. So Uppsala is an academic and sleeping city. When I went to Uppsala, it's a sleeping city. So nowhere to go, nothing to do, read and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not me, and this was not me. Then I observed the city for some weeks. Then I told the city that I have to do something. That I cannot live this way. Then, uh, he, uh, then they asked me what you can do and what you want to do. Then I said, I have to meet my colleagues, I have to meet the community people, and I need to know what others they do, and I want to listen to them, and I want to speak. Then uh, they asked me, that if you make a plan, then we can help you. Then I started to plan. The first plan was, I want to have a writing workshop, and then asked, where do you want to have? Then I said, it should be at the Uppsala City Library. Then Uppsala City Library said, we are not ready to have a writing workshop, because we are not sure it will work. Then the city said, it is a part of the city program, you have to do it. So it was a kind of command to them, and they, they offered, uh, opened the door. Then we continued. Now this workshop has been grown as a center for literature. Now a year we uh, organize more than 100 events. Yeah. Now we publish a literary anthology. This, is a, this year we published 104 writers from the Uppsala city. And region? Sorry, so it's friends and connections or nightlife uh, <laughs> cafes. No, no, it's not <laughs> nightlife cafe. It's yeah. a but something uh, that yeah. you are not alone at home yeah. and uh, the rest of the city is asleep. Okay, sorry, I interrupt because we really have to go out of this yeah. room, so yes. uh, three things. I have to say the, yeah. the bookstores in Reykjavik because there are plenty of bookstores there. And the group of people like uh, from Yongnar, the uh, mayor, I don't know if you heard about him, to the writers there, to the people, the friends, and the people of the city hall, which I I this is very important mm -hmm. that you are, the, r the writer feels hosted by friendly, in a very friendly way by people around. And uh, definitely this includes, like, extends into nightlife and, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, special <laughs> parties. And uh, also the Icelandic way of getting drunk, you know, but only try it once. And <laughs> finally, uh, my <laughs> kitchen. You know, Usually uh, once is enough for a lifetime. Yeah. Okay. yeah, exactly. And my kitchen, finally. Yeah. So it was the kitchen and the bookstores and the social network. There. Just say yes, and yes or no. Uh, has language education been any n necessary for you? Uh, do you need to know Swedish or Icelandic? Yeah, yeah definitely. I took some courses in, in Icelandic language. Definitely. This is not actually, this is not obligatory in a way, but like as you said, they don't oblige you to, to go through. It's like nice, but at not least yeah. needed. Yeah. 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 But in uh, for the job market, it is obligatory. You must uh, complete yeah. the SCFE. It's a condition for the job. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, get further. Th yeah. The system in Norway is a little bit different because uh, when we came, uh, we came uh, and we can, uh, we can sta stay there as a uh, permanent uh, staying and uh, not uh, like other countries so we have to be involved with uh, some uh, uh, obliged uh, programs and we go through this uh, programs uh, for two years at the same time as a guest writer also for two years and if I can explain uh, my motivation for writing in my country was the war love and family and here in Norway or Stavanger, uh, especially, it's oil, money, unhappy artists, and creative people. But sorry, uh, did you live with your kids? You have. Uh, so uh, yes, yeah, I yeah. have my so two kids with so me. So you you needed something for them too, because that's they something are my which priority, arise. of course, yeah. in life. So yeah. It's no, but I, I mean, some writers come with their families, some, some don't, and this is something we necessarily do not know in advance. There are huge differences between the artists. But then, Tumi, want to comment uh, on uh, this? Uh, uh, the short comment what is this. What are you willing to give? Uh, th this, uh, uh, what friends tell us here, 
shows, I think, the uh, very important part that people like all of us from Helsinki who are here today can play in making the Safe Haven program a success in Finland, that uh, the meetings between the artists who come and the people in Helsinki is a key to success, to sustain also the program to get more uh, Safe Haven artists, that everybody can see that, uh, that it is something that gives life and interest to our lives here. So uh, the voluntary effort by people in Helsinki to welcome and do stuff with the Safe Haven artists seems to me to very much key uh, of the program. Uh, so that, that I want to emphasize. The second thing where, uh, again, people's interest is needed is to put pressure on people like me to vote for the right thing in these matters. Thank you. If you want to finish with this, because uh, I, I won't give you the last word, but there's now going to be the discussion, so um, please go on. But anyway, at this moment, thank you for the panel. Uh, as we have gone quite much over time, uh, I think that we have to wrap up now and, and uh, there is a possibility for those of you who want to go to Kaisa. There will be some wine, some possibilities to talk, to discuss. Uh, I want you to give a big applaud to Isse who, who has documented uh, discussions and, <laughs> and when when we are done, uh, when we have the film edited, we will send you the link and you, you can, uh, at, at least for me, I, I, I realize that, that I, I need to watch uh, some of the parts again because, because <laughs> it's been so much to take in. So, and, I, I, and we will also try to uh, send you, with the feedback, maybe we can ha have like a, a s something saying, uh, if I want to share my email address, this is my address. And then when we, ha when we have all the addresses that wants to share and to be part of this, then we will send you. So it's, it's voluntary to send your email address. But if you would like to sort of continue somehow or finding ways to network, then we will send you the email address. Uh, or you can just ask each other now. And, and I, I really, really hope that we can continue in some ways to work for these questions together, not only in small cells somewhere, uh, multilingual cells, but, but together, multi, uh, monolingual cells, but multilingually together, uh, transnationally, transculturally. And yeah, and thank you to, to the Nordic Culture Point also for the setting and to all of you for being here. <laughs> <laughs>